everyone, it's Lisa from My Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Today I'm going to be doing another one of my continents soap and we're moving on to Europe this week and for Europe I thought about doing all sorts of things like Eiffel Towers and stuff like that and then I thought, do you know what? I've seen people do that. I'm just going to do a good old English country scene. So that's what I'm doing, staying at home and looking at England. So this is the design that I'm looking to do. I'm going to make a thatched roof cottage, hopefully with some flowers going over the door. I want a nice little English apple tree in my garden and then a typical English post box at the front of the garden. And most importantly, all of those elements need to go all the way through the soap. So the first thing I've done is made a tiny bit of soap up with some emerald green from the soapery. I'm making this early because I want it to get to piping consistency for the flowers going around my cottage door. So now I've got my oils ready and these are going to be the oils for my thatched roof. Now the thatched roof I'm actually going to pour in two bits but I want to make sure that it's all the same colour so I'm going to mix my mica straight into my oils and I'm using black gold from Mica Mama. Now I've worked out how much I need. When I'm measuring out my micas, um, if I'm measuring into some oil I just tend to put the pot of mica on my little mini scales and then just use that to sort of work backwards and just make out I make sure I take out the mica that I want. actually find that you don't want to mess around with measuring your micas so carefully. Remember I'm based in the UK so I have to record every single thing that I use and the quantities that I use and then send it off for a cosmetic assessment. So it is important that I measure and record every single thing that I'm using. Also as well remember if you know how much mica you've used in something and you like the colour or maybe you don't like the colour then what you can do is say right next time I'm going to use a bit more or a bit less so you're not always starting from scratch and trying to guess how much mica you want. I do tend to give my micas just a little bit of stirring with my spatula first, just because I find if you plop the stick blender straight over them, you can't then burp your stick blender properly and keep all that mica in the bell of the stick blender. So I do tend to start mine off just stirring them in. Doesn't have to be perfect. Once I've got rid of most of the lumps and bumps, then I can go in. And remember at this point, all I've got here is just my oils. Now another thing to be aware of if you are splitting your oils up, so for me I'm going to use this load of oils in a couple of separate pours that I'm going to be making up with separate little lye solutions. So you've got to bear in mind that you've now increased the weight of these oils by the mica that you've put in them. So when you go and split this off into the separate bits that you need, you need to make sure you take account of that increased weight because of the mica. Other thing to bear in mind as well is just because you've blended your mica and oils together, for me it's not going to be a problem with this one because I'm just going to use this in two goes so I'm going to pour some straight off now and use some in a minute. If you're going to use this in more than a couple of goes, so you're going to let it sit for a while and then pour some off, make sure you stir it up again because that mica will settle and then you won't end up with that nice even colour that you want. Okay, so I'm just going to split this out and get what I need for my first layer now. Okay, so I've measured off the amount of oil that I need 
and my lye solution and this has got some sodium lactate in as well. I use sodium lactate at a rate of 1.32% of my oils. Now I know that sounds fussy, again I'm in the UK so we have to weigh out everything specifically but that does basically come to the same rate as one teaspoon per pound of oils. And then the fragrance oil I'm using, I love this, it's gorgeous. Um, I got it because I thought it was appropriate for this soap, English Ivy Fragrance Oil from Nature's Garden. Oh, and it is a really, really beautiful smell. I do really love it. I'm really pleased with it. It does move pretty quickly, though, um, so I wouldn't do any mad swirls or anything, but it's going to be perfect for this sort of landscape type soap. Now, in the UK, if you're looking for Nature's Garden's uh, fragrances, you can get that from Sell the Smells, and I'll leave you a link to Nigel's new website that he's got in the description below. Okay, so let's just add our lye solution to our oils. I can really smell that fragrance oil. It's so gorgeous. Okay, so I've weighed out the amount I need for this soap. Now this behaved pretty well. As I said, it moved reasonably quickly, but it didn't rice or leave any fragrant spots or anything horrible like that when I tested it. And it didn't discolour at all. So, lovely fragrance. Right, let's go and get those embed moulds. Okay, so here are my embed moulds. Um, I'm going to be making two of these soaps. Now, I must admit, I tried really hard and I thought, oh, I wasn't going to make an embed mould and do all the palaver of making a silicone mould. And I thought so long and hard about how I was actually going to do these cottages without it. And I was going to do a little box and then I was going to pipe the roof on. And oh, I tried so many times to think of ways to do them. And I just kept coming back to, do you know what? Just do yourself a mould. It'll be easier. You've got the stuff. It won't take you long to make one. So... That's what I've done. I've done myself a mould. Well, two moulds, as you can see. Now, I've probably popped in a little bit more than I need there. I'm going to actually do a scraped layer here. But because I'm using the same colour in my next layer to finish off this roof, that's fine because I can just reuse this soap that I scrape off. Okay, so that's still pretty fluid at the moment. As I said, this, this does accelerate a little bit. You know, it's not the fragrance oil that I would do if I wanted um, to do, say, something like a column pour or something where you need the batter to stay really, really fluid. Um, but for something like this, it's perfect. Or, you know, a more simple pour or a hanger swirl, something like that, it would be great. So we've got to the point where we've set up. Now, let's just have a look at how it's set up enough. You can do a little tester because obviously we're going to scrape this anyway and you just want to be able to move the soap so that you can make a shape in it and it doesn't flop in on itself again. Try not to let it get too hard because then that just makes it quite jaggedy um, and pulls up more than you want when you actually do your scraping. Okay so I've done myself a handy dandy little scraper for my um, thatched roof. Now this is to make the shape in the thatched roof where you have a sort of a little design brought in. There's almost do sort of like um, some stitching in thatched roofs and they're quite often quite decorated and have some designs in them. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and scrape this out. Now, as I said, I didn't worry too much about being too picky about not putting very much in here because I'm just gonna scrape this off and then use this in my next layer. Okay. 
So now to make the detail for my little pattern on my thatched roof, <laughs> I'm going to do something that you've never seen be done before, um, and I'm going to do a mica line. <laughs> if you see my video on mica lines, you know I hate the things, and in that video I've explained why. I'm going to be using some antique silver from Mica Mama, and all I want to do is just give a little bit of definition and, and do that sort of like pattern on the roof. And I'm just going to very, very gently just sprinkle in some mica. Remember with your mica lines, you don't want to put in too much because it can cause your soap to fall apart. So I'm just being very light with this, just enough to give an idea of this pattern. And there's the old scrapings from the last bit that we did. So we're just going to mix these in together. So we can use what we scraped out in this next layer. And that will obviously work any time you do a layer that for some reason you need to do two of the same colour. Even if you're leaving it a little while, you know, maybe bringing another colour further up. Because as long as it hasn't gone rock solid, it will mix in pretty well. You will typically need to give it a little blend because it's unlikely to go in super smoothly on its own. And let's get this poured in. I'm going to use my spatula just to try not to disturb that mica line too much. Okay, so let's go through and do some more scraping. We're well set up. I've been doing all my washing up. Um, now this little scraper I've done to go up into the roof and make the little areas where we're going to have our windows. Okay, so exactly the same process. Okay, so now I've got a whole host of little things, little embeds, an embed for my embed. I didn't record these because I made them at silly o'clock in the morning. Now, first thing I've got is just some sort of little rectangles that I've extruded. They're going to be the doors to my cottage. Then I've got these little red strips. I want to do um, some trailing roses or something that looks hopefully like some trailing roses going over the door of the cottage. So these are going to be the rose flowers. I'm not going to need anywhere near this many, um, but I did them just using one of the standard discs that comes out of any extruder set that you've got. And as you can see, it extrudes a whole bunch of them at a time. And then I've also made some windows. Okay, so again, I extruded a little cross and then I extruded four little squares and then just stuck them all together to make some windows for my cottages. Colour wise, these are made with antique silver. This was terracotta red and these are just activated charcoal. Okay, so back to that <laughs> speedy setting up piping. Now, I'm actually not going to need all this, so for me, a dollop of that can turn into soap dough because there's no fragrance oil in it at all. So I'm just going to take a little bit of it, or quite a bit of it there, and then that batter that I've just emulsified, I'm just going to use a touch of that 
and we can work that in and that you can use to now loosen up your piping so yeah if your piping set up too much then you can just loosen it a bit now obviously this only works if you've got easy access to some more soap if you're someone that individually mixes up your soap every single time and your piping is the last thing to do then you're probably going to not want to mix up a whole batch of soap again but can you see how now that lovely and smooth and again back into a nice pipeable consistency so I would always if I need my piping for the middle of a soap or something I would do it a little bit early and take the risk that it sets up a bit quick and just add a little bit more soap into it as I said that be my soap dough so the rest of this I can now use for the yellow of my cottage now to do this I'm actually going to do little bits at a time so I'm just going to pour some off and add a little touch of the fragrance oil bring our houses back in okay so first of all I just want to put a little bit in for the windows Okay, then I'm just going to grab my windows and start popping them in. There we are, quick shimmy, get everything level. Oh, pesky bubble. Go away, go away. Okay, so I've just filled my teeny weeny little icing bag. Um, and this is set up a little bit and I've got the rest of the embeds that I need. So what I want to do is try and do sort of like an effect of some roses and things growing around the door. So there we are, hopefully you've got some cute little cottages in there, so I'm going to pop those in the oven to sea pop, a little bit more extra soap for me, and then we will make the rest of the soap tomorrow. Morning everyone, here we are on actual soap making day, so very exciting. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of colours, these are the extra colours that I'm going to be using in my main soap, so let's just quickly run through those. I've got Shimmer Blue and sunshine yellow and also antique silver all of these are from Mike and Mama in the UK some good old titanium dioxide already pre-dispersed 
and some emerald green. This is from the Soapery, but it is exactly the same emerald green that you would get from You Make It Up Pure Rock Minerals. It's all exactly the same um, overall supplier. I've also been busy making some other little embeds. Um, now, it would have been nice to have made these on the video, but I am conscious that this video is going to be very long anyway. So, the first little embeds I've got, and I've got two sets, but I'm going to have to make these separately because I've only got one mould in the size that I want, is I've just done some very thin strips and extruded these, and these are going to be my little gate at the front of my soap. I then made an apple tree. Now I didn't extrude this, all I did is I got some green soap dough, I did extrude the little apples, but I just laid the soap dough out and then laid the little apples onto it and then just kept covering them with green soap dough and smushing them round and then making it into a round shape and then sort of pinching all the edges because I didn't want it to be a round tree, I wanted to have some sort of shape and movement to it. So there's my little apple tree. And then lastly, my really cute teeny weeny little British post box. So I made myself a little extruder disc and I actually had to make this in one, two, three, five parts to get the little white bit where you have all the collection details and the little post slot in there. So there's my little post box done. So those are all our little embeds. They're going to go into our soap.
everyone. So here we are the next day with our little cloudy soap. Let's get this cut. And let's have a look at what we've got. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I'm really pleased with those. I really like the little cottage. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> I'm really pleased with those. They're really sweet. My little post box. Um, I like the way, I'm really pleased with that thatched bit. The little mica line has come through really nicely. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but oh. <laughs> Let's have a look. They're all going to look pretty well the same. And also, I'm, I'm really pleased that I managed to um, not get any holes and things in them. You saw how much I was trying to squeeze that batter in just to make sure that I got round all of the shapes and things. So, I am very, very pleased with how I got a tiny weeny little hole there in in probably quite an unexpected place but that's easy we can just fill that with a little bit of soap that comes off the side so there they are my little english cottages and my little english post box okay so i have cut my other loaf as well i didn't worry about doing that on the camera um, and the other loaf is great, but the little cottage has come out slightly wonkier. Can you see some of the little windows where I tried so hard to get them straight? They're all quite wonky. And when I cut this at first, I was really quite cross with them. And I thought, oh, rats. But to be honest, the more I've looked at them, the more I've really grown to love them. Uh, and I actually really love the little old, look at that one, the little old wonky cottage. So I think what I'll do is these ones with the little wonky cottage, I'm going to sell those separately as uh, my little crooked cottage soaps. Because <laughs> I must admit, the more I look at them with their little wonky bits, I really do love the wonkiness in them. It's quite funny. So those are going to go separately. <laughs> I've got right a wonk on. Um, as the little wonky cottage soaps and even their little gate is slightly wonkier on that one and then the other ones the ones that you've just seen me cut which are a little bit smarter are going to go in my packs where I do the full continent range yeah so separate standalone wonky cottages and I don't know <laughs> oh I do really like them. <laughs> the little wonky ones too and then I'll just leave you with a final picture of the soaps. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy soaping!